Today I'll be debunking an anti-vaxxer who is also a scientist. But just like the doctors I've addressed, her title doesn't make her more right. Even though she has a PhD, she still uses disgusting scare tactics and wrong information to try and scare you into not vaccinating you or your children. This scientist's name is Teresa Dacier, and the claims that she makes regarding vaccines do have to do with aborted fetal tissue. So, you've been warned. I'm Teresa Dysher, and I am a scientist, the president and founder of Sound Choice Pharmaceutical Institute. So a vaccine consists of a virus. The virus is a long chain of nucleic acid, and nucleic acid is what makes up our DNA, what makes up our RNA, and it's too long to make in a test tube. So we mimic nature's way of propagating or growing viruses, and we infect cells. That's a pretty incomplete description of what a vaccine is. Vaccines don't have to be made just for viruses. They can also be made for things like bacteria. And a vaccine doesn't have to include a whole virus. Sometimes a vaccine can include just proteins from a virus, and not the virus itself. Sometimes those proteins are enough to grant immunity to the host. It's also useful to expand on what she said about how we mimic nature to grow viruses. A lot of the viruses that we vaccinate against are viruses that can only infect humans. Viruses can't live on their own. They need a host cell in order to replicate. So in order to grow them for the purpose of developing vaccines, we have to grow them in human cells. We can do this in a lab by growing human cells in a dish and then infecting them with virus. When this happens, the virus grows and multiplies, allowing us to harvest the virus and then either kill it or inactivate it in order to make vaccines. MMR, chickenpox, Zostavax, that's shingles from Merck, all hepatitis A containing vaccines, um, Penticel, the polio com component of that, and um, uh, one of the rabies uh, vaccines. So in order to grow these viruses in human cells, we need to have human cells that are what we call in the lab immortal. These are cells that can divide indefinitely so that we can keep passaging them, or in other words, transferring them from one dish to another so that they can keep multiplying in order to keep infecting them with virus that we can use to make vaccines. The two ways we can have immortal cells are either cells that are cancerous or cells that are embryonic. So yes, this means that some vaccines are produced using human cell lines that are derived from a fetus that was aborted in the 60s with the consent of the mother. It is this fact that Teresa Dacier twists and turns to her own agenda in order to convince you that this is a bad thing. What you have are procurement companies who are working side by side literally with the abortionist and typically right in the building. This is where she starts twisting the facts. In reality, there are only two embryonic cell lines that are used to create vaccines. Both of these have been used since the 60s. She makes it seem like there are elective abortions daily that scientists are just ready to harvest in order to keep making vaccines. That is not the case. Well, it, it's not an old technique. Some of the cell lines that they're using for vaccine manufacture were made back in the 70s they're starting to kind of poop out. So they actually have to make new cell lines to replace those. On a daily basis, aborted babies are harvested and exploited for biomedical research. And the practice continues because we close our eyes to the ethics of vaccines. And when we do that to people who don't share our moral outlook, there's no difference between an abortion done in 1970 and abortion done yesterday. So this is more twisting of facts that Teresa is trying here. Like I said, these cell lines are immortal, which means that they can replicate indefinitely if handled correctly by scientists. So they're not gonna really poop out anytime soon. 
So the idea that babies are being harvested daily in order to produce vaccines is just false. Also, regarding the ethics of this, I can understand that depending on where you fall on abortion, this might seem a little iffy. But for what it's worth, in 2003, Pope Benedict XVI did say that this should not deter parents from vaccinating their children. We absolutely know that the levels of DNA in these vaccines get into our children's bloodstream at levels that are above, sometimes a hundredfold higher than levels of fetal DNA that has been demonstrated to massively activate the immune response, causing a general cytokine release, and cytokines are toxins. And we are giving children 10 to 100 fold higher concentrations. We absolutely know toll like receptor 9 will be activated. The pharmaceutical companies have never measured cytokine release, um, and they've never measured um, that uh, acute autoimmune response. Okay, so there's a lot wrong there. Let's start with the first thing the amount of DNA in vaccines. The amount of fetal DNA that ends up in these vaccines is quite small. DNA is not super stable when it goes through the vaccine generating process. So a lot of it breaks down and you end up with what amounts to about trillionths of a gram in a final vaccine product. This DNA is also highly fragmented, which means it's not going to do anything if it does things like get inside your own cells. But what Teresa is really worried about here is it causing an immune response. We know that DNA in vaccines doesn't really cause that strong of an immune response because we have to add things like adjuvants to these vaccines. And it's the adjuvant's job to stimulate the immune system and get the cells to that area so that you can build up an immunity. But to discredit her point even further, there are some scientists who have tried to use DNA as adjuvants in vaccines. That means that they tried to use DNA in order to stimulate the immune system in a vaccine. And those studies included safety trials. And what they found is that DNA in vaccines stimulating the immune system is safe. Absolutely, there are alternative. Alternative cell lines that we can use to manufacture the vaccines. Um, we can use animals and, and animal models, which are actually better because adult animals are more similar to the human if you choose the right animal and you do a correct model than looking at fetal material is. Hold on. Did she just say that animals are more similar to humans than humans? Look, first of all, we're not trying to create a model here. It's true that some animals are good models for what happens in humans, but in this case, we're trying to grow viruses in human cells. And viruses are very finicky. Sometimes viruses won't even infect another animal except humans. So this is a really weird claim for her to make. At a minimum, read a bit of the package insert and you will see the acknowledged side effects that could happen to your normal, healthy child. Do a risk evaluation. Is your child at risk for this disease? If they were to get the disease, what are the consequences of getting the disease? Is it really that bad or could we medically manage it very well so my child would be fine? This is some of the slimiest, most disgusting advice that anti-vaxxers will very commonly give out. When it comes to the question of, is my child at risk of getting this disease? If they're not vaccinated, then yes, they are at risk. And is it really that bad? Yes, most vaccine preventable diseases are pretty bad. At worst, your child dies the better outcomes aren't really that good either. If you have measles, you're going to have immune amnesia, which I covered in a previous video. If you have a vaccine preventable disease like polio, then you could be permanently maimed for life. At best, you're putting your child through unnecessary suffering, which is child abuse. 
I would encourage all parents to ask their doctors how immunity is caused by a vaccine. And if your doctor doesn't talk to you about toll-like receptors, then your doctor either knows nothing about immuni immunity or virology, that's vaccinology, or they're not telling you the truth and you should get a doctor who knows what they're talking about or tells you the truth. Well, based on that statement, nobody should be taking advice from you because you don't seem to know what you're talking about. The body generally has two different mechanisms of immunity. One is classified as innate and the other classified as acquired. Toll-like receptors are generally classified as part of your innate immune system, whereas vaccines are generally aiming to activate your acquired immunity. Because acquired immunity is what is going to allow your body to remember a pathogen in order to fight it off in the future and avoid infection. So this is kind of a really weasel way of convincing her audience to go and ask her doctors about something that a doctor would never try to explain to a patient in the context of vaccines. Well, I think that's enough of Teresa Dacier for today. Until next time.